Amen. Good morning, saints. Good to see everyone this morning. Jesus bore it all for all of our sins. Bore it all for the entire world's sins. According to John 3.16, the Bible says that he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that you ever might believe, might have life, might not perish, be taken away from this earth. Even the people that are going to church today, downtown at the big church, at the big church, and that's, you know, that's okay to go watch football. Nobody's saying anything wrong with that. Love to, to see the Super Bowl myself. But it's God who's important upon the first day of the week because he gave us life. And this is the day that we glorify him. Any day of the day between the, the time the sun came up until the sun goes down tonight. We have an opportunity to worship God somewhere up on this earth, even after the Super Bowl, even after the Super Bowl, even if you miss worship this morning, you can be somewhere in this earth gathered with two or three saints worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so God has made it not hard, not difficult for any of us to worship him according to spirit and according to truth. But it is evident that the actions of our heart must be manifested through our walk day by day. And that's something we have to look in the scriptures to mirror to find out how it is that we're supposed to walk every day. And so the heart of a man is, is, is difficult for people to understand. The heart is inside. It's not the, not the one that pumps blood. It's not the one that pumps blood. It's the one here. It's the heart. And so therefore... Thank the brothers for all their service this morning, for coming up praying, for uh, 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 reading the scriptures, singing the songs that we sing. You know, we don't have any instruments up here, no instruments. You see a male before you because the Bible gives us direction on how we're supposed to worship in God's house. God's house. And we are God's house according to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Right. We are his house. And everybody in here has a house, and nobody's going to let anybody come in there and just take over their house. Right. Nobody's going to let a strong man with big muscles just come in and kick the front door down and just come in and do what they want to do. There's structure in everyone's house, and there's structure in God's house, too. That's why there's no clanging and banging in here. But in a little while, we'll hear something like that coming from across the hallway because there is uh, ignorance of God's word. Nobody's saying people are ignorant in the sense that the ignorant, ignorant, but it's a lack of knowledge of what God would have us to do. But all we have to do is read the Bible and we can find out what it is that God would have us to do. Let's look at the book of Timothy right quick. Look at the book of Timothy. Look at 2 Timothy 3. We'll look at some instructions here. Look at 3 and 15 in the Bible says. And that from a child, this is Paul writing to Timothy, he says, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. There's no guesswork. Well, what, what should we do on Sundays? What should we do before God? What, she, what should we do? How should we work? How should we walk every week? How should we deal with our wives? How should we deal with our families? We look into the Bible. Amen. We can thoroughly be furnished unto all good works. How should, we, how should we act at work with our bosses? You know, in the Bible. We read the Bible, we find out. How should we work with our neighbor next door? And I know that's tough sometimes because we, we see the news, people are shooting neighbors down in the yard. It's a hard thing dealing with neighbors, but we got to. Just like we deal with families. It's a hard thing dealing with family. The bad kid in the family, the one who wants to be bad, and he wants to do all the stuff, he wants to, 
He wants to be on the drugs at a young at a young age. He wants to do all the bad things. He wants to hang out with the wrong people. You got to go to the park and tell him, "Come on home, man." You, mama said, "Come home. Quit dealing drugs." You got to go get it. You got to do the same thing with the neighbor. You got to try to say, "Hi, how you doing?" You know, and they gonna say something about you. You got you got to try to be the one that lights shine across the street over the fence. You know, I never forget that show with this guy. Uh, he had a neighbor, and he would walk to the backyard. The neighbor, you always saw the neighbor's hat. You never saw his face over the fence. You always talk to the neighbor in the backyard. So we have to make sure that we use the Bible. Look at, look at a couple of chapters over here in the book of Timothy, third chapter. And it says in 1 Timothy, the book, the second chapter, and it talks about how we should act. You know, that old church, that old church of God, uh, in uh, Acts 7 and 38, was a church in the wilderness. And this is what so many people get, get so wrong. It's the old church in the wilderness. That was a church in the wilderness. That old church in the wilderness. Everybody been in the wilderness before? I've never been in the wilderness. I've never been, I've never been enslaved by Egypt. These are things that you can tell and understand that well, that church in the wilderness, okay, I'm, I've never been a part of it. I've never been in Jerusalem. I'd like to go. I've never been to Jerusalem. I've never been a physical Hebrew, and I wasn't circumcised on eighth day. My little brother was circumcised, and I, was, I always wondered why my mom didn't circumcise me. I said, I'm missing out. I'm missing out. All of them were circumcised. What have got them? I didn't get circumcised. I got the tonsils out. I, get... I was like, what happened? What happened to me? But it wasn't, it wasn't eighth day. It may have been. I remember very distinctly. There's some things you remember as a kid. That's one thing I remember. Certain things I don't remember. Got circumcised. I don't know if all of them did, but he got circumcised. But it was for a reason. There's some medical reasons. I don't have to discuss that with you all. But you all know those, those reasons. It wasn't eight days. It was another reason. I didn't have that problem. So that's why I didn't get circumcised. Look at uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse number 15. The Bible said, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. He refers to the church of God. Church of God. He said, the pillar and the ground of truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Great is, great, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, Received up into glory. So God is telling us, until I come back, this is how you need to act. This is how you need to act in the church. Notice that we don't have any female preachers up here. We don't have any. <coughs> church of Christ would never have any. Even if you have churches of Christ that have some preaching now, God said in heaven there won't be. In the book, there's not. In the book, there's not. God, God is not dissing women. Women play an important role. They teach. They teach in the church. But they don't have authority to stand before an audience like this. With them. It's a mixed crowd. Right. And teach God's word. Not on a Sunday. <coughs> now you can go somewhere else on another congregation somewhere in town. And you'll see plenty of women teaching. Right. Plenty of them. But they'll never do it in the church of Christ. Right. They'll never do it in the church of Christ. Because this is the rule book. This is the rule book. We had, a, we had an important revelation yesterday. Uh, brothers. And sisters got together and did a wonderful thing, cleaned out the building and everything, and got everything done. Got everything done. But me and my infinite unwisdom, I would say my unwisdom, did a measurement that was incorrect. And we took a brother who came along and got the measuring tape from me and measured a tub another way. He said, no, it's going to go in the door. I, I measured it alone. He measured it this way. Brother Javier, I said, wow. I said, okay, brother, well, maybe, maybe you're right. Now, we put that thing on that truck and take it around now. It's got to fit up. We got to bring it back. Well, lo and behold, a whole bunch of brothers took it around there, got it in the door, turned it sideways, pushed it in, and pushed it in another door. But me, I just got to, I'm going to stand up like this and push it in. It won't go because it's too long. <laughs> but Javier got the measuring tape. We needed the rule. Yeah. We need the rule. That rule told us everything. No matter what we said or what I said, we got the measuring tape. This is the measuring tape for us today, for every human. For every human being. It's the measuring tape. Everybody walking in the hallway. Everybody eating out there. Everybody. Everywhere. We can, you can't miss nobody with this. Everywhere. It don't matter who you are. What city you in. You can be in Turkey. You can be in Mumbai. 
Whatever, whatever, no matter how you speak, what language you speak in, it's in your language somewhere. I don't usually speak Mandarin, Mandarin, Chinese. You know, I mean, if whatever it is, you, God will not miss you. God will not miss you. But it's the heart of man, which the brother read in Acts the ninth chapter. Paul's actions showed that his heart wasn't right with God. So God had to do an operation on him. And God is the only one who can do uh, this operation on us. Man, man cannot do it. I read a uh, Facebook post, and uh, I think the young guy was very confused. But I'll tell you what, it's a marvelous thing that Facebook, it's, it's a good and it's a bad thing to me. But anybody can post anything, whatever they believe in their heart, they can post it. But you be careful what you post, because somebody might slam you on, their, on Facebook and tell you something that you need to hear. Something you need to hear. So that's a fantastic way to, 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 to share God's word. Amen. He could be a star making billions of dollars and post something on them, and you can touch his heart. Yep, yeah, that's, and that's just that's exactly what I did. So I'm waiting for his, his post to come back so I can see what he has said. Look at 1 Peter 4 and verse number 11. So you just can't say anything without having some backing up from the scriptures. The scriptures have to back up what we believe in our heart. What we have to make sure is that when we use the scriptures, whatever, whatever, whatever our heart says has to match the scriptures, and our words has to match the scriptures. It has to. It has to be a match. Verse, verse 11, 1 Peter 4 and verse 11, the Bible says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. So we have to speak. If we're going to speak, we've got to have ability, but it's got to be as the oracles of God. As the oracles of God. As the oracles of God has said. So Paul was on this road to Damascus. He was on his way to crucify Christians. That's not the right action. That's not the right action for a Christian to display. It's not the right action to display. Now we see in the scriptures that he read that, that immediately after he came and, and, and Ananias came and put his hands on him and took him and baptized him, he went straight away and started preaching in the synagogue. Right in the synagogue. And then after they heard the message, they were astonished that this guy had flipped the script on them. He's like, man, this is Paul? No, 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 I, we're not going for Paul. We're not going for this. Now they tried to kill him after the first message. And people will try to kill you too. They will. They won't physically kill you because they know they're probably going to go to jail. They're cowards. But they'll, they'll kill you with their eyes. Oh, yeah, they will. They'll kill you with their eyes. So, so we, must, we must realize that. Look at the book of Proverbs. You know, the heart, is, the heart is very deceitful. It's a very deceitful membrane. You know, I love watching cooking shows. I love watching cooking shows and... These cooking shows, they, they like to eat cows, hearts, and all kinds of hearts. And you know, that, that's, that's cool. After you're gone, I guess it, it might be good. I don't know. But you might, we got to think about what's more important than eating a heart and it's filling it with the right things to prepare it to meet God one day. Because the physical body won't stand before God, according to, according to book 1 Corinthians 15, I think 48, somewhere up in there. <coughs> Flesh and blood cannot enter into, into heaven. So we're going to stand before God naked. And God can read every man and every woman and every child's heart. Better than any internet, any Facebook, any Google that they ever, ever will invent, can invent. God puts it in the mind of man to invent that stuff. No way a man can just figure stuff out like that. God had to put it in his heart. But do they give God credit for doing that? No. No. Look at, look at chapter 16, verses 1. Chapter 16, verses 1. The Bible says, The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Now you see that, what he says? You think about that for a minute. He says, let's, let's read it again. The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. 
So one must understand that he's preparing to meet the Lord. But the answer you give from your heart has got to be from the Lord. So if you never met the Lord, how are you going to give the answer? Okay. How are you going to give the answer? I mean, you ask people, have you ever heard the gospel? You ask people, have you ever heard the gospel? Yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Great, yeah, I've read all of them. And good tidings, that's in the Bible. They say it's the good tidings of God. But, but no, the Bible specifically tells you that it saves you. What, what saves you that Mark, I mean, uh, uh, John, Mark, and, 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 and uh, Paul, and I'm, I'm sorry, and, uh, and Luke wrote? And all these men wrote. What saves you that they wrote? Specifically in the Bible. Can't figure it out. God has hid that in the, in the midst of the Bible. Isn't that something? God has hid it in the Bible. Because if you think the first five books of the Bible are going to save you, the Torah, you, you got to, no, it's no way. Those books have been done away with, abolished, destroyed. So you got to say, when you say abolished, people don't even believe that word. What do you mean abolished? Destroyed. Read it everywhere else in the Bible. It's in the Bible and lots of other places. Read it and find out what it says. It means destroyed. If you, if you tell somebody, uh, if, you stay along, if you stay outside a drug house that's abandoned, and you call the city of Houston, you say, uh, Mayor uh, Turner, can you get a crew out here to, to abolish this house next door? I bet you know what it means then, because you're trying to get this drug house out from next door to your house. You'll know what it means then. And when they tear it down, it's no longer there. It's no longer there anymore. So the Old Testament is still there for our learning, but it's no longer there for our was binding law on, on men and women like you. Like we said before, I've never been to Jerusalem. I've never been there. That's the old church. That's the old church in the wilderness. See how, see how God prepares our heart? Before I was a Christian, I never knew that. My, my heart was not prepared. It was not prepared. I thought I was dealing with my family right, my kids right, my wife right. Yeah, I loved them, but I wasn't dealing with them right. Because my heart wasn't prepared right. Because I still had a slight, some slight problems within my relationship. Still hitting the clubs on a regular basis. Yeah, still hitting the clubs. Still getting drunk on a regular basis. Okay, I had to ask them out. Got to come on home. Got to stay at the house. Take your wife somewhere with you. Y'all go somewhere together. You go to the club. That's the wrong place to be going. Because it's the appearance that you're doing something you're supposed to be doing. Right. See, so God says you got to X that out. You see, some things that you got you to gotta fix. Amen. You got to fix. Verse 2 says, all the ways of a man's all the, way of a, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. The spirit, the inner man. God weighs the spirit. Still sneaking around, still sneaking around, got the little old spat tie in the back. And then in the spat tie, you got the little old, little old bottle of a yak, they call it in the back too. <laughs> While you going to the spat tie's house. Not wrong. Your tongue still, you still got that little cuss word that come out, pop out every now and then. That you can't get under control, you can, you can control it, because I stopped doing it. Amen. Can't even say something words nowadays. Can't even say them. But some people say them freely. God bless you, man. Blip, blip, blip. Right after they finish. Right after they finish, stop cussing you out. Man, the Bible deals with that, too. The Bible deals with that, too. You know, fresh water and salt water do not flow from the same faucet. That's what James said. It does not flow from the same faucet. Try it when you get home. And turn on that water and salt water come out of it. I guarantee you be calling the city. I got a problem. I got a problem. You be calling the city. Because why is this salt water coming out through my faucet? Have y'all got y'all place fixed up right? Something's easing in? You know, you know the difference. Because the Bible is the warning to the inside, inside the heart. Inside the body, the physical body to stop you from, to, from taking in something that's, that's bad for it. Now you taste it. You say, man, you know what? Something wrong with this meat, right. this chicken, this, there's something wrong with this chicken. <laughs> Throw it away. Because you're just not going to eat it. And neither should you eat anything else that you hear from all this filth that's going on in all these, all these churches that are whoring God's word. Mm -hmm. I said it. They're, they're whoring God's word. How can you not miss this right here? Amen. How? how can you not? How you miss it? Verse 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. See, thy works, that's thy actions. That's your actions. Paul's actions were corrected on the road to Damascus. But lo and hold, for, for any of us to have to go through that to get our, our actions corrected. You know, God has sent man to preach God's word to the lost. And they don't have to go through that. Man, don't have to, you don't have to get beat down off, off your horse and see the bright cloud, the, the, bright, uh, the, 
uh, hear, hear, hear a voice from heaven and a, and a shining light come from heaven and get knocked down to the ground. You know, you don't have to do that. But God, God has sent people like you and I who've heard the gospel, who've obeyed, who know what it is to give the information to the world. And so therefore, uh, that is what we're supposed to do. Chapter 4 says, The Lord has made all things for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of evil. Mm. Nobody thinks they're evil, though. And that's the problem. Nobody thinks you're, they're evil. Well, let me, let me just say this for, the C, for this um, CD. If you're not attending the Church of Christ upon the first day of the week, God says you're evil. Amen. Mm. Amen. Church of Christ. Well, we, got, we got the name in the Bible, mm-hmm. Romans 16, 16. We got Jesus saying that he was going to build his church, mm-hmm. Matthew 16, 18, in the Bible. He came to establish his church. Well, how many was that? One. One. Mm-hmm. One. Amen. He called it it. You got a wife? It's his bride. You got a wife? Leave here, leave here with somebody out there with another jersey on that ain't your wife today. <laughs> I guarantee you have some problems. You better not go home. You better not go home. You, women leave here with some other man with a jersey on, go home with him a day. No, you're not going home. And if you do get home, it's going to be a strong man waiting at the door for you. Waiting for you. Oh, yeah. I seen, seen a terrible Facebook post the other day. I mean, this girl, girl probably wasn't even married to the guy. Guy found her, you know, got up on her while she was dancing with another guy. guy she had her leg all around the guy. Man, he phew, disrespected her, I'll tell you that much. That is far from what a man's supposed to do to his wife or to a woman. Mm. Wrong action. Not your wife. And that was a wrong action for her. She probably, you know, probably wasn't, you know, probably wasn't supposed to be doing that with that guy. She's not married to him. Out there displaying herself half naked. See what happened? So, so therefore, the wrong action, we must display the right actions. So we understand about God and his church and his son that he sent. He only had one son that he allowed to even understand and even to know the things that you and I know now. There are some that would wish to know what we know now about the gospel. Look at verse number five. Everyone that is proud in, in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though with, through, hand in, through hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Amen. Nobody's going to go unpunished. The wicked are not going to go unpunished. They've got that heyday right now. They're enjoying their life right now. And many of us should enjoy our life as Christians. That's right. We enjoy our life as Christians. Amen. We should enjoy our life. I love being a Christian. Yes. love being a Christian. Because the other life was filled with inequity. Mm-hmm. It was. Mm-hmm. Leads to nowhere. It's like working all your life and not saving a penny. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to die. You're going you're gonna to die anyway. You can't use it. But hey, you work, you work, you're going to get old. You want something to put up when you get old. Right. Mm-hmm. Your back has been, you can't work no more. You walk on a cane. Mm-hmm. You want, you want, everybody wants to have something. That's what you're working hard for. He says, verse number seven says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he make it even his enemies to be at peace with him. So, so we must understand, we must understand that God, God can make our ways pleasing, pleasing to him. But you know, man looks at, man looks on, on men in a way such as that is comfortable to him. It's not a way that he looks on man as God has commanded us to do so. So God has to help us to see what it is that God would want us to do and how he would want us to look on others. Look at the book of uh, Daniel. Look at the book of Daniel. There's an interesting story in the book of Daniel here about a man whose actions whose actions were not pleasing to God. And I'm going to leave this message with you after we read this example in chapter 5. Chapter 5. Because it does not take a lot for, for a, pe- a person to understand that he has to have a love for God and that his actions have to please God. And it doesn't really matter who you are. God has no respect to person. 
what position you hold. You could be the president of the United States on down to the mayor or governor of any, any city, any state. And you can abuse your power, but God is going to hold you accountable. And so I want to read this chapter here. And it's got uh, 37 verses, but I'm way ahead of schedule. So we're going to read it about the king Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Great king, Babylonian king. His fame, was, his fame was notable to the whole world at this time. All over the world. And, you know, the United States, we're not talking about the United States. It wasn't even, the United States wasn't even a, anything anywhere near thought about at this time. But this, most, of, most of these, you know, I've looked at the Bible, and, and a lot of the things that were happening in biblical times were happening in a region, you know, in that region that you call Asia, the you know, Africa continent. Over there, a lot of those things were happening over there. Those, that's what, that was abroad, when the Bible talks about abroad, a lot of those things were happening over there. And if there was any other part of the world, then it spread it out. But most of those things were happening over there, in that part of the world. Jerusalem, you know, Turkey. You know, Antioch, which some of these places don't even exist today. They all get called other names now. So, you know, history, I don't think anybody can really get history you know, to the pinpoint because nobody was really there. I mean, you can get some sticks and dig up the ground and brush some stuff away. and You can find some, some relics, but nobody was really there. Nobody was really there. The closest we can get is the Bible because they're still digging up stuff now that the Bible talks about. Mm -hmm. Still digging stuff up that the Bible talks about. People are denouncing the Bible. It's a good story. It's, fa it's a fairy tale, you know. Well, that's your, that's your opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. So, so this, this chapter here, we're going to start in chapter 5. I'm sorry, chapter 5. I'm looking at chapter 4 when I see it. 21, 31 verses. Chapter 5 has, uh, has more than that, but we're, gonna, we're not going to read all of them. Let's start at verse number 1. We're going to read about Nebuchadnezzar and his son. Okay. Belshazzar, king, made a great feast to thousands of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden, the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princess, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. So he's going back to the church of God, which was located in Jerusalem. And his dad has already, you know, took captive everybody, not everyone, but he took captive uh, uh, some of those uh, Jews at that time. And he's brought back some of the, the holy things out of the temple. But Nebuchadnezzar has already been taught a lesson. But now his son is sitting on the throne. So now his son is going to be taught a lesson as well. So he's having a party. He's having a party. And he decides to bring out all the, those holy vessels that his father has taken. He's going to break it. He's going to pour his wine in them and his concubines and all his prince buddies. They're going to drink and they're going to get it on. It's going to be on now. So he says, verse 3 says, Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of, of the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. And the king and the princes, his wives, his concubines, drinking them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold. Wrong God. Praise the wrong God. And see, silver and brass and iron of wood and of stone. These are physical things. The physical things. It says, In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that was wrote. See God has got to wake his God has got to wake him up just like he has to wake up folk today with the word of God. You just got to tell folk hey this is the only one church in the Bible. Well I don't believe that. Well that's your problem. Let's look in the Bible. Let's, let's look in the Bible. Not, no, not trying to be so. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying, but you know, that's that's the problem that you have. Let's look in the Bible. Let's read it from. Let's read it in the Bible. Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter what that says because my daddy and my grandmother, they did this and they did that. And I, if it was good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Okay, fair enough. 
when you want to study sometime, you, you know, here's the Bible track, here's my number. Let's get together. Let's just look at it. Let's look at it. But, he says, in the same hour, this hand appeared out of the wall, out of the plaster, just like that wall right there, hand disappeared. In the, in, the, in the Bible says, in verse number six, then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smote against another. You don't believe that the, the people that you talk to have the same problem when they walk away from you? Eyes big, say, man, you know what? I'm, I mean, I better go check this out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Some people take, it takes some time for people to understand the gospel if God gives them an opportunity. But sometimes, you know, that word has to just marinate on them. They have to just see things for themselves if God peradventure gives them time. When I heard it the same day I heard it, I got baptized the same day. But I've heard some people, it takes them what, seven years later. The Lord gave them seven more years. They're they can baptize seven years later. So, so once you grab it, you got to hold it, though. You got to hold on to it. You can't go backwards into the world. So, so he's, his bones are shaking, his knees are shaking against one another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said, unto, uh, said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and, sh and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now, this is what people are trying to do today everywhere, all over the land. They're trying to interpret God's word. Everybody is trying to interpret it. But as we see here, uh, the king is trying to get the Baptist, the Catholic, He's trying to get the Methodist. He's trying to get the cowboy church. He's trying to get everybody to interpret God's word. He, this is what he's trying to do right here. If we bring it down home, we can, we can see this is what he's trying to do. Nothing but a Jew, a faithful Jew, can interpret God's word. He wasn't a Jew according to Amos 3 and 3. Those are the people that God chose. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't choose the, the Philistines. He didn't choose them to come interpret God's word. He didn't choose the Amorites. No. No, he destroyed them. He made those out of examples. Okay, so verse number, number 8 says, Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known the interpretation, the king's interpretation thereof. So they, couldn't, they could not interpret God's word. He couldn't interpret it. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed. And his, 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 and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the word of the king and his lords, came into the banquet, banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy trouble, let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man that is, there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of God. Of the holy God, and in the days of the, thy father, like understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made, thy father made, thy father made master of the musicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. So he's he's being told about. Uh, Daniel at this time, verse 12 says, For as much as, as much as an excellent spirit, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubt were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belshazzar. Now, let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times on your job, they say, call. And hey, what you call that guy that works on that line over there? Man, man, he, uh, he know a lot of Bible. I mean, you know, he can even pray for you over there. They know. Mm -hmm. They know who you are. They know, because they know they get the answers from you. Because right. you got the answers from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord is not giving answers to everybody. Mm -hmm. He's not giving them to everybody. We got all truth. They got a little bit of truth everywhere. Mm -hmm. but we got all truth. That's right. We got to have all truth. So the Bible says, 13 says, Then Daniel brought 
Then Daniel brought in before the king all the king, all the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou Daniel, which art the ch which are of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jewry, brought out of Jerusalem? He said, I have e I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods, the gods in thee, that and that and that light and understanding and excellence wisdom is found in thee and now and, and now the wisdom the wise men the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not show the interpretation of the thing and i have heard thee that thou canest make interpretation and dissolve doubt now, if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in thy kingdom. God is blessing us because if we stay faithful, God has a conditional agreement between every last one of us. And that is if we stay faithful. If we stay faithful. Amen. No, we remember back, we remember back when the Jews went across Jordan, that young group went across Jordan, and there were those two mountains, Ebal and Gerizim. God made, gave Joshua proclamations of evil and good, and he let them, he let them understand. He said, now when you go forward, you're going to make a decision whether or not you're going to be a blessing or a curse. Right. So the decision is yours and mine, whether we're going to be a blessing or a curse, whether we're going to hold on to God's word. See, we can't think that we, if we're getting off track that, that everything is happening that's because of God. No. Nope. No, we just, we always want to be associated with blessings. Nobody ever says they're a curse. I'm a curse. I'm a curse. No, everybody says, God bless you. I must say, God curse you. Man, don't do that. You do that, man, you'll be, you'll be tossed out of Houston. You'll be tossed out of Houston. Everybody wants to be blessed. So we can't mess, we can't figure, we can't try to figure out that, well, the Lord is blessing me. I always hear somebody say, your blessing is coming. Your blessing is coming tomorrow at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Nobody ever said your curse is coming tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I'm going to post that one day. I'm going to post that one day. I'm not a poster too much. I try not to, but I'm, I'm going to put that on and see what happens. All kinds of comments. You see, so we got to understand when we walk righteously, that very same group, that very same group, group in uh, Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, God, when, he, when Joshua was talking, he, said, he tells them, he gives them, he gives them instruction. He said, he said, if you do good, he said, I'm going to bless you. But if you don't, then I'm going to curse you. I'm going to curse you. So we know if we're doing good, if we know, if we know we're not doing right. We know. So here is, here is Nebuchadnezzar. There's, I mean, here is his son. There's no good coming to him right now because he's not doing the right actions. He's not doing the right actions. He thinks he's right in his own heart, but he's not doing the right actions at this particular time. So I went on a rant, so I forget my scripture sometime. So verse 16, I'm going to start there. And I've heard, and I'm going to start at verse number 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gift be to thyself. I don't even want your money. I don't even want your money. He said, He said, Let thy gift be to thyself, and give thee thy reward to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. You see, a lot of people are asking for money this morning, mm -hmm. in a lot of congregations. They're asking for your tithes. They get together on Wednesday, they ask for your tithes on Wednesday too. Right. I'll make a lock the doors on Wednesday. You've been all night long giving money. <laughs> Preacher might need a thousand dollars. I got a cat like I got a helicopter I need. I need y'all to give. <laughs> no, God ain't. That's we got instructions in the Bible how to give. We give on the first day of the week. What, that a basket's right there. We're gonna give in a little while. First day of the week. Now all day long today we can give. We can give. You know, you can give individually to you know, anytime you want. To a saint, someone else. Preacher, whoever, you can give. But when he, come, when he talks about the church giving, there's a designated day when you work all week, you put aside a certain portion, and you bring it, and you put it in the basket. Amen. And that's the way we give. It's not called tithing. It's not called giving and tithing, no. Uh -uh. You're trying to mix up old and new. You're trying, to, you're trying to sneak, yeah, you're trying to give old and new. Won't you stone your kids, too, and, dis and discipline, too, discipline them, too? Stone them and discipline. It's just bring both of those over. Well, come on outside. I'm going to stone you, and then I'm going to take you inside. Watch CPS come in your house. Watch CPS come. You can't do that today. You can't do it. And those people that are doing it are called ISIS. 
That's what they're called. Yeah, that's what they're called. And they're trying to put them in jail now. So you want to join them if you want to. That's, that's done. They'll do whatever, you, whatever it is that they need to do to you. So, so verse 13, 18 says, O king, the most high God, uh, o, o thou king, the most high. Let me see. I, I turned the page. I know I have my page. Okay. The most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor and for the majesty that be gave him all people, nations, and languages tremble and fear before him. You see, God has given him that honor. God has. God has given our president honor and glory. He has given him honor and glory. He says, he would be kept alive and would, he would, and said, and whom he would, he set up, and whom he would, he put down. That's what God does. That's what God does. Even among us. He says, but when his heart was lifted up, that was the problem. When his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingdom, his kingly throne, and they took his glory, his glory from him. So when his heart was lifted up, that was his problem. Wrong action, suffer the consequences. God took your kingdom. God took your kingdom. See, some people think that, you know, when we get a new car and we out there doing wrong, God and bless us with the car. No, the rain shines on the, on, the, on, the, on the just and the unjust. But we got to really think about when things happen. Well, you know, is something wrong in my life? Let me examine it. Let me examine it. 21 says, And he was driven from the sons of man, and his heart was made like the beast. It said the beast, and his dwelling was, was with the wild asses. They fed him with, they fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was watered with the dew of heaven, till he knew the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Amen. Amen. And twenty two says, and and thus, and thou his son, O Belshazzar, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart through. Thou knowest all this. So his heart was not humble, knowing all that had happened to his father. That's a part that our hearts have to be. Our, our hearts have to be humble. They have to be humble. And some people are so lifted up in pride, we know what comes after the fall. Verse 23 says, But has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they, and thou, and they have brought the vessels of the house before thee, and thou and the, thy lords, thy wives, the concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou, it says, And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, hear not, see not, know it, and the God of heaven, whose hand thou breathest, whose hand thou breath is, and whose are all thy ways, has not known, has not, has not glorified. So he hadn't glorified God. That was the wrong action. It was the wrong action. He says, "Then was the part of, then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Meaning, meaning, tinko, ofersin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Meaning, God has numbered thy kingdom, and finished it. Tinky." Thou art weighed in the balance, and art found wanting. Perez, the kingdom is, di is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belsh Belshazzar, and thy, and that and that clothed. Excuse me. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning. Concerning him that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom. He got glory anyway. He got, he got, well, he, exactly he didn't want it, but God allowed him to receive that, he says. Verse 30 says, And in that night was Belteshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. Wow. In the same night. And Darius the Median, Darius the Median took the king 
and bring about and, and being about thir three score and two years old, he says, it, it's in, we're going to read number, number five, first, first couple of verses. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes and should be over the whole kingdom. And over, the, and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first that the princes might give account to whom, unto whom, and to the king should be should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents. Look how, look how he got lifted up. Princes, because of an excellent spirit, was in him, and the king and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. But God can raise us up and glorify us. I'm not glorify us, but lift us up. But we can't be lifted up in pride when God puts us up on that high place. Right. We have to always remember, no matter who we are, we still have to be humble Amen. and serve God. You know, often I think about that, you know, you know, what would I do if this or that? How would I react? You know? And we have to confound people with our reactions. Because some people will want you to just go ahead and just thrash me, thrash that person. Man, you don't he treated you bad. I, I can't do him that way. I can't I can't do him like he did me. You know, you know, we got Matthew five that tells us, and you know, you can't we can't we can't be five for five. We can't do our enemies that way. So therefore, we have, we have rules inside the Church of Christ. And this morning, you know, a person can become a member of the Church of Christ. He can. All he has to do is obey the gospel. All he has to do is obey the gospel. And lots of people know part of what the gospel is. Like I said, there's a little bit of, little bit of truth here and there. They know a part of what the gospel is, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Yeah. Paul said... I received the same thing that I'm giving to you, that Christ died and was buried the third day. I believe that. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? The Ethiopian eunuch in the 8th chapter, coming from worship, coming from Jerusalem, coming from that old church in Jerusalem, on the way to work, or wherever he was going, going through Gaza, met Philip, poor preacher, in the desert, in the desert, reading the Bible, reading the Bible, but he couldn't get it. Read Messiah, the prophet, couldn't get it. Didn't know who he was talking about. Who is he talking about? Him or some other man? Philip jumped up in the chariot. Just like this morning, if you listen to the CD, we jumped up in the chariot to help you see God's word this morning. Amen. We jumped up in the chariot. And you've got, you've got to be humble like the eunuch because Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And see, he said, how can I? See, that's, that's humility. That's humility when you say, how can I? He says, how can I? Unless someone guide me. Today you don't, have, you don't have very many people that say that. That's the spirit we're looking for. That's the spirit we're looking for when we talk to people. When we ask them, have you understood it? Do you, have you heard the gospel yet? And have you understood it? Somebody says, how can I? Can we sit down? Or can we have a Bible study? So I can show you. So this is how God helps us. We have to hear God's word. Uh, uh, Romans uh, 10, 17. And faith comes by that. Faith comes by that. And we must believe it like the eunuch did in Acts the 8th chapter. He believed it in Acts 8, 36. He said, hold up. He says, there's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? So we understood that he taught him about the gospel of Christ. Because water is always a part of that baptism. Amen. One has to be baptized. Acts 2 and 38. Why? Baptism is for the remission of your sins. God takes away your sins when you go down in the, in the, in the watery grave of baptism. That is the birth. That is the new birth because you can come back up. And that new man has to be manifested. Romans 6, 3, and 4 and following. It has to be manifested. No, he didn't dig, he said he didn't say dig a hole in the ground, lay in it. I'm gonna cover you up. Then after three minutes, I'm gonna uncover you. Now God is good. God is good. And then most of all, when you wake, when you come out of that grave, you're gonna walk in newness of life. You're gonna walk in newness of life. And God is gonna do something from heaven. Revelations 1 and 5. Christ, Christ is the one who's gonna put you in his blood. He's gonna dip you in his blood, because he's the only one who can do it. Never baptize one soul on earth. He's going to baptize you, with the, baptize you with the Holy Spirit from his place on the throne in heaven. Amen. Give you that. And he's going to add you to the church. Which one? Romans 16, 16. Churches of Christ salute you. Amen. The one that he said that he was going to build, Matthew 16 and 18. Told Peter that. Peter tried to build three. We got men today trying to build more than that. Amen. And they're getting away with it. Because the law, the law don't mean nothing to them. The law don't mean nothing to nobody no more. Law is just a law. It's, law. it's for you and not for them. And so therefore, 
We have to be faithful. We have to live faithful lives of Revelation 2 and 10. And the law will, will grant us a place in his kingdom one day if we do that. So thank you for being so patient this morning uh, with me this morning. We thank you for uh, your faithfulness and your work. And let's continue to work in God's kingdom and continue to spread the gospel of heaven, the gospel of Christ to all those who would want to hear it and all those who would, who would not want to hear it.